ABIT with the learning outcomes, then I'm going to show two rubrics for two learning outcomes that we've used in mechanical engineering in the past, because I was in mechanical engineering until this past August. And then uh, Nikos is going to show uh, some that he's used as an aerospace engineering. And you'll see that there are different ways to set up the rubrics. And so this way you get a little bit of a variety. And, okay. So these are ABIT seven learning outcomes. And if you look, I'm not going to read through all of these, but if you look at them, they're really broad. And um, I've been told that compared to previous ABIT visits, um, evaluators are going to be looking in particular to make sure that each aspect of each learning outcome is assessed. Uh, in the past, sometimes you get evaluators who didn't really care that much about assessment, but it sounds like there's a good chance that our evaluators this time are really going to be focusing on it a lot more. And so if you look at these, you can see that, yeah, again, there are a lot of different elements to these uh, particular um, learning outcomes. And so what many departments have done is they've used, used performance criteria. Sometimes some departments call it something different. Um, performance criteria is just one word. And performance criteria are ways to break down a broad learning outcome into smaller pieces so that you can show ABIT that we're meeting each of these particular pieces. And not only is that helpful for ABIT, but it's also helpful for us as our ultimate goal of assessment is to improve our, our, our teaching um, of these particular topics. Uh, because when you break it down into smaller pieces, it's more easy, to, it's easier to see where our problems are. So we can really pinpoint where we need to focus our work. And so I'm gonna show some performance criteria that for again, two learning outcomes that Emmy uh, uses. Now you, it's not required to use performance criteria, but if, if you don't, effectively you're doing something similar because you still have to have your assessment tied to the different elements of the different learning outcomes. So I'm gonna use, uh, I'm gonna talk about the design and teamwork learning outcomes. So on the top, we see the, the learning outcome uh, from ABET. So this was not developed by the ME department. This is uh, ABET's uh, learning outcome. And so the performance criteria, those were defined by the department. So we looked at, hey, here's our broad uh, learning outcome. And how can we chop it into very small pieces? So you'll see in ME, we took the design learning outcome and chopped it into six smaller elements. And so we can assess each of those elements separately. Um, and I'm going to, sh and oh, on the bottom, there's uh, ABET's definition of design. So we see it's something that's very open-ended. Uh, and so in the ME department, we're using uh, three different courses to assess design. And I'm just gonna look at our senior design project for the second semester. And in that class, we use the final project report to assess uh, criteria one through five. Now we can't just say, oh, everybody got A's and B's on their final project report. So they're doing a good job on design. And so we're all, we're all good uh, because that kind of assessment doesn't hit all the different elements of the learning outcome. This is our grading rubric that we use for senior design. And um, this is for the, the final report in the second semester. It's by far the most detailed rubric that we use in the whole department. It's three pages long and students have it ahead of time so they can kind of tailor their projects uh, to their project reports to what they see here. And in terms of ABET, certain learning outcomes are tied to certain rubric elements. So for example, performance criteria number two is developing design specifications. And this row right here, the second uh, row for chapter one, deals specifically with objectives and specifications. And so we can say, okay, if students have a four, that means they exceed expectations. If they have a two or three, they meet expectations. And if they have a zero or a one, they do not meet expectations. Um, so kind of the key things that we'd like to see with a really good rubric is first of all that, um, at least in terms of ABET, that the different rubric lines are tied to different performance criteria, and also that there's some description uh, 
to discuss, you know, what the different elements to, to, to discuss the ranking. So if you just say, hey, rank this person from one to four, different instructors in different classes and in different semesters may define a four versus a three versus a two differently. So here we're using a language to describe what is a four, three, or two. Um, now everything highlighted, that's something I put in special, the students don't see that. Um, but like here, defining the problem statement, that is design performance criteria number one, PS1, we also use this for the problem solving rubric, which Nikos is gonna talk about. So we won't mention that here. Um, everything in green that I highlighted are things that ABIT requires us to include in a culminating experience, but it doesn't have to be assessed. So the new requirements for culminating experience, you have to cover codes and standards. So we kind of highlighted that just to make that jump out, but you don't have to assess that. And so you can see all the way through, there's a whole bunch of different rows that relate to different performance criteria. Like here's performance criteria four, which relates to an economic analysis. And for us, we're having the students to develop a bill of materials as part of the economic analysis. And then once you get results, if you're using rubrics like this, you have to think about how are you gonna display the results? And this is just one way that you can display results. So we used, like, as I mentioned, three different classes. So for example, performance criteria four, I'll mention that one because we just looked at that. That was the one related to a bill of materials. And this one I'll also mention because this is the one where you can clearly see the students are having trouble. Um, they're, um, over half of the students did not do a good job with that particular bill of materials. And so for the second round, we were able to see, okay, that's an area that we need to focus on to improve. And so we've implemented some improvements based on that. Uh, but this way you clearly see how students are doing on each aspect of the design process uh, since they're, it's, the evaluation is done with a separate performance criteria. Um, outcome five is teamwork. And again, uh, it's a pretty broad outcome. So our department in, in ME um, cut, chopped that into three separate pieces. Um, and one thing that, I, that could, should be noted here, I did speak with um, someone who trains ABIT evaluators and who said that you know, some assessment really should be done by instructors. It shouldn't be all done by peer evaluations, which is what in the past in ME that we had done. And also if you, your assessment for teamwork is something like all the teams got good grades, so the teams must be working okay, is not gonna fly. I did see that last year in some of the annual reports. I was the assessment coordinator for College of Engineering last year. And so what kind of assessment should you do? And again, I'm just gonna show a couple examples. So this is a teamwork rubric that our, the senior design instructors used last spring. And instructors did, completed this rubric for each student, which is like 160 students, but we did have six different instructors for that course. Um, one thing you'll notice again is that students aren't being ranked from a scale of one to five. There are different words to kind of illustrate different levels of student performance. So in providing leadership, you can see what the students have to exhibit to exceed meet or do not meet expectations. And that's for those three, uh, three different elements. So that's what we used for, uh, for the instructors. And we only did this for the senior design class because that's the only class where we felt the instructors had enough regular interaction with the teams to be able to provide that, that kind of information. For a semester report in our mechatronics class, uh, for instance, there could be 130 students in that class and it's one semester. There's no way the instructor is gonna know enough to be able to fill this out. So we only are using that for the senior project. Uh, and then we also used, uh, let me show you one more element. We also used a peer evaluation form and we used a Google form for this largely because there are like 160 students and each student is filling out a form for each member of their team. So that's like 500 uh, different reports that are coming in. 
And so use the Google form. There may be other ways that are more efficient, but this is what we used this past spring. So each student had to fill this out once for each team member. They had to list their instructor. So then the owner of the Google sheet could sort by instructor and send each instructor his or her own um, students uh, results. And then the students had eight questions they had to answer for each student. And each question, again, was tied to a particular performance criteria uh, so that we could go and look and say, hey, for this particular performance criteria, we could, we could figure out how well the student body was doing. Um, and we don't need to go into all the different you know, questions here. Um, so for example, this one is design decisions and innovation, and they have to uh, rank each of the members of their team. Um, we used to use a long time ago, a form where the students ranked participants from one to 10 in different areas. And you can guess what happened in that case. <clears throat> For most of the reports, all students gave everybody in their team tens and everything. Once we switched to having verbal descriptions like this, instead of a numerical ranking, we got a lot more, um, disparity in the results that we got. And so then this is the kind of results that we got for teamwork. Um, we're still waiting on results for one class. And the light green is basically poor. Dark green is okay. Uh, the gold is they're doing great. One thing that's interesting and not surprising is if you look at, for example, performance criterion one, and this is kind of the same with all of them, the instructors had a lower view of students' performance than the students themselves did about each other. And you can see they didn't rate each other quite as highly. But this is the kind of results then that we can get. And so again, you can kind of look and see, okay, where are the weak points? Where do we have the most students with, with poor results? And then we can work on that particular element. <clears throat> 